The Spooky Mansion by Mrs. Soderholm. When I was 10 years old, I lived in a tiny cul-de-sac in Edina, Minnesota. The houses were small and modest, but at the end of the street, there was an enormous three-story rickety old mansion. It was on a huge property that was completely surrounded by a six-foot tall iron fence. Something happened to me there that I will never forget. On a warm October day, David, the neighborhood bully, approached us. My sister Kelly, my friend Debbie, and I were playing Foursquare. Hey, have you been to that scary house yet? He asked. I heard it was haunted. I bet you guys are way too chicken. We're not afraid of that place, Harry Paul replied. We just haven't had the chance to go yet. Well, I dare you. We looked at each other, nodded, and yelled, you're on. After that, we made a plan to meet under the streetlight at 7 p.m. We told our parents that we needed to use a flashlight to play night games. Once Debbie arrived, we headed over to the black iron fence and started climbing up. As I was swinging over the top, my jean pocket got caught and I heard it rip. Then I fell heavily to the ground with a loud thump. Ow! I yelled. I gently pulled myself up and glimped after the others. On our way to the house, we came upon ruined tennis courts. Grass and weeds were growing up through the cracks on the pavement. We kept going until we came upon an in-ground pool. It was disgusting. We could see about two feet of slimy green swamp water at the bottom. Ew! Finally, we reached the house. We turned the metal doorknob. It opened with a creak. We were shocked when we looked inside. The door opened into an entryway. On the left side was a living room. Old photo albums were ripped and they scattered on the floor. The maroon velvet couch was shredded as if a tiger had attacked it. It was covered in a thick layer of dust. The room smelled damp and musty. On the opposite side of the hallway was a dining room. There were broken china dishes and glass on the floor. The tarnished brass chandelier was hanging from a single wire. I knew better than to turn that light on. The oak table was scratched and a wooden chair was laying tipped over on the floor. We huddled and clung tightly together to each other as, a, as we slowly made our way down the dark hallway. The blue wallpaper was torn and peeling. Our shaky flashlight beam revealed the remnants of a destroyed kitchen with more broken dishes and bottles laying in a greasy, once white sink. We didn't dare open the refrigerator. We backed out slowly and turned to find a closed door with a glass ball handle. Should we? I asked. The others shrugged their shoulders, but no one answered. So I carefully opened the door as my sister tightly gripped the back of my shirt. We peered in. It was an old fashioned bathroom. There was a filthy porcelain tub with claw feet. On the floor were broken medicine bottles. We inched forward toward the strange-looking toilet with a wooden toilet seat. All of a sudden, a furry pointed snout popped up over the toilet seat rim, followed by some claws. We saw the rat's red beady eyes and screamed, Ah! We immediately backed out and tore down the hallway. Debbie opened the front door, but we all got stuck trying to squeeze out at once. Finally, we were freed and raced through the wet, dewy grass. We reached the fence and scrambled over. After we hit the ground, we ran down the street straight for my house. Once inside, we flew through the house and passed my mom, who gave us a bewildered look. Up the steps, we scrambled and then straight into our bedroom. Kelly slammed the door shut. We dove into my bed and huddled together under the covers. Safe at last. After a minute, Debbie started giggling. Soon, we were all squealing with laughter. David was wrong. The house wasn't really haunted. 
It was deserted, destroyed, and infested with rats. It wasn't a safe place for kids to play, and we never went back there again. To this day, I wonder what happened to the family that lived there. Years after I moved away, the city tore down the deserted house and turned the property into a nice little park.